coming Saturday at 8 o'clock at Orchestra Hall. There's more information when you go to Classical Mission. Uh, next we have approval of the agenda. Any questions or comments or suggested changes to the agenda? If not, I'd look for a motion to approve as presented. So, second. We have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and then next we have the consent agenda. Any questions or comments regarding anything listed under the consent agenda? If not, I would look for a motion. Oh, Jimmy. Uh, Jeff Huber's name was not on the attendance for the finance personnel committee. I would like to add oh. to that. He, he made a motion. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you for catching it. Thank you for that change. All right, so we will make that one addition to uh, the um, meeting minutes. Any additional changes? If not, then I would look for a motion to approve as amended. So moved. So we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, we have reports, and uh, for the chairperson, I'll start. I just wanted to briefly mention that um, on June 13th, um, a number of us attended the MACTA annual conference at Union Depot in St. Paul, um, and the commissioners that were in attendance were myself, Randy, and Ginny, and um, I just wanted to say it was a very helpful and informative conference, and also wanted to make note that um, Tim was on the planning committee for the conference um, and also served as a moderator. Thank you, Tim, for your help in making that conference um, so informative. And also, um, while Mike Bradley isn't here this evening, um, he was also um, a panelist at the conference. And I'd highly encourage anybody who is able to go um, next year to attend. And that's all I have, so we'll move on to our treasurer, Jim. I could stand for questions, but the bills are paid and we're doing pretty good. Great. Any questions for Jim? Thank you, Jim. Then we'll move on to our executive director. Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commission members. Uh, I'll just be quick. Uh, in part because uh, we have an air conditioning issue in the studio <laughs> here today. So uh, the temp is um, uh, hopefully going to uh, be acceptable here before we get until uh, we get to the end. But uh, the only other thing I wanted to bring, we have a service call tomorrow, by the way, on that, because it's going to hopefully resolve it. Uh, the only thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that the, the franchise fee redistribution checks were sent out to the cities, along with the audit and uh, a, an annual report, um, and uh, sort of in the new format, I copied all of you on that, and so, um, you know, I'd be curious about your feedback for the, with, on, on those annual reports, uh, sort of listed the programming and services we provide uh, to city and they're sort of customized for each for each city and so um, I, it seems to be received well so uh, but I'd be curious about feedback because I'd, uh, you know, I'd like to try to follow that format if you all like it for, for next year. Uh, aside from that I think I what I have to say is I'll cover it the rest of Very good. Any questions for Tim? All right. Thank you Tim. Then we will move on to operations update. Uh, reports and staff meeting minutes are in our packets. Questions or comments? Then we'll move on to committee reports and committee meeting minutes are in our packets. Questions or comments? All right, then we will move on to our attorney. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, I have a few things for you tonight. Uh, first is that the FCC recently published a, a notice of proposed rulemaking seeking to modify its over-the-air reception device rule. Uh, this is commonly referred to as the OTARC rule. Uh, this rule was originally intended to allow individuals to have satellite antennas installed kind of either on their homes or in their backyard, something like that, uh, by limiting local government authority, but only in that narrow aspect. The FCC in this NPRM is now proposing to allow any number and type of wireless facilities to be eligible for treatment under this rule. <coughs> An 
easy way to think about this is really whether you're okay with your neighbor being able to uh, cut an agreement with Comcast to have a 20-foot pole put up in their backyard with several antennas and relay hubs and everything else because that's frankly that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, if you're okay with that, um, and while your neighbor, you know, for all that kind of inconvenience and ingress egress, all of that might be getting some sort of minimal monetary benefit, you get nothing and you have no recourse. Uh, and that's really what it boils down to is whether or not you think your local government should have any role in that type of relationship. Um, so this commission participated in a group of local franchising authorities opposing the FCC's proposed rules by filing reply comments on the grounds that the FCC lacks the statutory authority, just simply lacks the authority to, to enact that rule. Uh, the proposed rule would negatively impact local communities, uh, and the proposed rule fails to protect consumers and even goes so far as to preempt local governments from protecting consumers. Uh, these reply comments were filed on June 17th, and I'm happy to provide a copy to anybody that's interested. Uh, we're now hearing uh, that the FCC is rethinking whether it actually does have that statutory authority, so I think our reply comments were well, well received and heard, uh, but we'll be sure to kind of keep you updated on the status of, of uh, this proceeding. Uh, second, we have the Restoring Local, Local Control Over Public Infrastructure Act. Uh, two weeks ago, Senator Dianne Feinstein recently introduced the, the Restoring Local Control Over Public Infrastructure Act. This act would repeal, uh, wholly repeal, the FCC's latest actions affecting wireless facilities, uh, including the 2018 kind of small wireless facility and one-touch make-ready orders. Uh, as a reminder, these orders severely limited local government authority and prohibited local governments from coping even fair market value for use of their rights away assets. Uh, as of now, this bill does not have any Minnesota supporters. Uh, finally, um, as this commission is well aware, the FCC has an open proceeding that is proposing to allow cable operators to offset non-monetary franchise requirements like peg channel capacity uh, against franchise fees that are paid to local franchise authorities like this commission. Uh, it's almost certain at this point that this agenda item will be on the FCC's or discussed at the FCC's August 1st meeting uh, and is likely to be adopted thereafter. We heard rumors today that there would be a draft order that would circulate um, but as of today, but as of, well, I guess, 5.30, we hadn't seen or I hadn't seen anything yet. Um, but we, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard this over and over again, but we expect this every franchising authority to immediately take a 20 to 30 percent hit on their franchise fees. Uh, so we're currently evaluating internal appeal options, uh, which possibly includes joining a national effort um, and coordinating with other law firms to have everybody kind of help share this cost because this is, uh, this is a big deal. So, um, I'm happy to answer any questions on any of those exciting topics. <laughs> Great. Any questions or comments for Vince? All right. Thank you. Oh, yes, Jeff. Sure. What, what type of strategy are, are we hearing about? What type of strategy is being recommended in order to uh, sort of combat that that tactic by the uh, by the cable companies in terms of uh, monetizing those non-monetary benefits? Yeah. So what we assume will happen is that uh, Comcast, we say Comcast, will decide what the value they will unilaterally decide what the fair market value of their channels are, um, despite there not being really a fair market uh, for them. Um, they will decide that, and they will just start unilaterally offsetting that value against the franchise fees paid, and they're going to make us come after them to go get that back. Uh, I imagine that's how it's going to happen. So we have been evaluating kind of the legal strategies. Do we file for a petition of stay, petition for reconsideration, those different options? Uh, with this FCC, our best bet will likely be to file a uh, petition for stay uh, immediately, have it denied immediately, but then that allows us to appeal out to one of the federal <clears throat> so, a similar thing happened about, about what ten years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and we were after the FCC did, did something similar, and that same scenario carried out, yes. and that ultimately uh, the municipality won in court, and the FCC's rulemaking was invalid at that point. So. I assume that some of that same sort of strategy. And, and does that case provide us with any uh, actionable um, 
uh, findings by the courts in the past so that we can head this off easier, or is this have they taken a new strategy and is this a brand then considered a brand new threat? This uh, I would consider it a newer threat uh, in this. Really, the underlying context behind all of this is because uh, I don't think that the cable operators are very concerned with their franchise fees. They they are concerned, but to a lesser extent. Their primary concern is losing uh, the mixed use argument, the mixed use network argument. They don't want to give up control over broadband uh, networks. That, or more importantly, they don't want us to have any control over broadband networks. They don't want us to get franchise fees on broadband networks like the city of Portland did. That is their big fear, and I think that's what's really going on in this proceeding. Interesting, and it would be interesting to get more information on that so they could read that outside of this meeting. Absolutely. Additional questions or comments? All right, thank you, Vince. And we will move on to the cable company. And I don't believe there's anyone here in attendance from the cable company. So we will move on to unfinished business. We have nothing. And then under new business, we have the 2020 budget recommendation. Tim, would you like to start us off? Yes, Madam Chair. Here's my question I have for you is the recommendation of the Finance Personnel Committee for a 2020 budget. Uh, the requirement under the joint powers is that you um, approve a budget and forward it to uh, the member municipalities uh, no later than August 1st. And uh, so what you have in front of you is the committee's recommendation for that. Um, this budget is essentially an as-is sort of budget. Uh, and it looks a lot like the one that we're currently using in 2019 fiscal year. Uh, we have some minor adjustments, reflecting that uh, on some cost changes, um, uh, and it's more significantly the reduction of one position that um, the committee decided to budget is, is, I said, as is. This budget assumes, I think it's also important to note that this budget assumes continuation uh, under the same or similar franchise uh, provisions and same or similar joint powers kind of scenario uh, in terms of our, our municipal membership. So um, obviously if there are changes that are significant relative to a new franchise, you know, the commission will have to modify this budget potentially. So, uh, in, with those caveats that you have before you, as we'll present to the uh, member municipalities, if you so Thank you, Tim. Uh, any questions or comments? Karen? Appreciate, appreciate the work that they did. Yeah, well, right. That's a lot of work. But uh, I think I noticed here that we are. We've increased the budget, and as of last year, we didn't even, we were blessed to have us uh, franchise fees or whatever. If we don't have enough money to meet the 2020 budget, can we then take it from the reserve funds? Well, you'd, you'd have to make that judgment about how you were going to deal with it. I mean, there might be multiple options for that using any reserve funds to, to, to finance the budget is, you know, that would be on the table, I guess, for, for consideration, depending upon what the circumstances are. <clears throat> Additional questions or comments? Randy, were you able to say everything that you wanted to say? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Jim, did you have any comments? No, no, I think, I think it looks good. Of course he did, yes. Yeah. Um, my only comment on it, Madam Chair, is uh, Karen brings up the point if things were to change, would, would reserves be used in order to continue funding uh, the ongoing operations? And, and while that would be certainly probably from my perspective alone, part of the strategy and part of the matrix of decisions to be made, there would certainly have to be some other changes made. 
uh, because it, you can use those reserves to sort of transit your way into a, the, the changes that you need to make depending on what's, what's going on with the revenue sources, right? So um, hopefully that doesn't happen. I know we're all going to work hard so that doesn't happen. And uh, the budget itself, is, is, as Tim described it, I think Jim would probably agree, is, is pretty much a set piece. Not, not much has changed. Um, it's, uh, we're just sort of riding it out until we get this, this next set of negotiations done. And I think it's a good way to put it. Thank you for those comments. Agree. Any additional comments? If not, then I would look for a motion to approve the 2020 budget as recommended. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And thank you to everyone for the work on that budget. I know that is a long process. Uh, next step, we have production truck design proposal. Tim, will you be starting us off I on can, that one? Yes. Great. Thank you, Madam um, mm -hmm. Chair, Commission members. The uh, recommendation you have in front of you is from your operations committee, and it is to view and uh, approve a uh, proposed proposal for production uh, truck design. Uh, as you recall, we had previous discussions at commission meeting about what to do about our, our pr production truck. And um, the previous discussion was in, included the idea of acquiring an entire new chassis and, and box. Uh, since then, we've had a little bit of review of the actual existing chassis and box, and there seems to be a thought that at least that has some lo some longevity to it as a, as a chassis and engine, and you know the, the structure itself on and the box structure itself is is uh, has some longevity yet. Uh, the question is whether we can find a design, sort of a gutting of the interior of it, that, and then a redesign that's going to look, that's going to work for the new kinds of equipment that you want to have in a, in a production truck to upgrade that. Um, the obviously the ideal is to have high definition uh, capability, and uh, uh, and so in order to make that happen, the thought was to hire professional uh, designers to take a look at that and come up with a plan that would address not only the, kind of the equipment and, and that sort of thing, but the layout, you know, things like HVAC, electrical, you know, co conduit, and to, to uh, determine what's going to work, what's going to fit in a new truck. And so this is a step uh, of creating a design through this proposal. Uh, doesn't commit the commission to moving forward on anything else, but it creates a design and then something that would um, you could then, if you liked it, issue uh, out at to you know uh, to do the next step, which is to have implementation of a of equipment and so forth. Um, so the final product would be a design plan that the commission could could use at that point. Uh, that's really what I have to say. In terms of the kind of details, if you have any quite technical details about the proposal, Jeffrey Wilson is here with us, and he can answer any of those. Um, Jeffrey, did you have any comment about it at all on what I've said? Uh, no, you summed it up pretty well. Uh, this is kind of our next step forward in getting our truck up to speed. Um, it's, it's at a point now where things are failing at a rate that is becoming frightening. gets us that next step of, okay, how do we retrofit our existing truck with equipment that will last us another 10, 15 years? Mm -hmm. So, Jeffrey, one thing I wanted to say is that when you presented to our committee the proposal of this, I like the way you set it up. It's There's like three parts to this project, and I think that you've come back with a real plan that we can see and what we need. And you, one thing you pointed out that I finally got <laughs> was that professionals, having professionals do it so don't, we don't have to go back and spend more money because you forgot this piece or you messed it up or whatever. Professional, you get professionals to come in here and design the truck 
how it should be. They know exactly this, the, the footage. Everything is perfect. I was very impressed with that. And as I told you at that meeting, I totally support this because we're not going to get a new truck. I was on the committee that bought the truck you have, and I know that we need our truck because that's the big thing that our cities use, and that's our obligation to them to be able to provide them with this. And the truck will be gone down for a while as it is. So I think that um, the sooner we can move on the plan, uh, the better it would be. Absolutely. But thank you. I, I think you did a very good job. Thank you. Well said, Bev. Thank you. <laughs> Jenny. Um, I'd like to ask any of the committee members to, to comment. Um, it seems to me we've talked about the truck every year for the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. And that going ahead with the design, which I don't have any problem with at all, but it, it seems to say we're making a commitment to do something here with the truck. Why, right. why design it if we're not going to do anything? Right. So I just want to, if you want to summarize anybody, how you came to that conclusion of step one, step two, step three, or? Why don't you tell them the steps, like you did. That's how I really understood it completely, was when you laid out the three steps. And I think if Jenny had that explanation, she would understand, she would answer her question. Uh, I think what you're linking to is, um, so this would, uh, lay out a plan in terms of so we know kind of what equipment we've done we've done the research we know what we'd like to see it do um, this step is is uh, taking those ideas and figuring out how to uh, bring them to fruition uh, what um, what is going to work and not work uh, based on what we would like in the truck um, uh, getting the design the footprint of the truck fixing all of the deficiencies that are existing, uh, rearrange all of the uh, existing infrastructure inside the truck to uh, uh, to make it work with uh, updated equipment. Um, from there, you would have a plan that would show uh, both uh, what it would look like and then costs uh, to make that happen. From there, then we, you know, if that was approved, then we would have a, an idea of cost uh, moving forward uh, to uh, actually building out the truck over a span of about a couple months. Uh, I guess where I really am coming from, thanks for the explanation, is that we ought to be asking our questions now if we have it, because it seems to me that if we're six months down the road and we have a proposal for the equipment that's reasonable in price, that's not the time to say, should we do this? I guess that's where I'm coming from. So I would just encourage people to ask their questions. I am in favor of fixing the truck and moving <coughs> forward, but I just want to be clear that we shouldn't have, we, sh we should foresee any hurdles now and not wait six months down the road. Luke? And that was part of the whole planning process with these folks was that basically, we're not far away from being obsolete with that truck altogether. And it would, part of their proposal, as I understood it, was taking all the different bits and pieces that we have and making sure that they all fit together mm -hmm. within the truck. This, the, both the infrastructure at the different uh, cities, the infrastructure that we've got here, the, the things that we're planning to do and the things that we want to do um, so that we don't just get this all together and two months later it's obsolete <clears throat> somewhere else. That's what these guys are supposed to be doing for this amount and if I if I understood correctly it's babysitting it all the way through to delivery pretty much at this price that they're hands-on with making sure everything is working and or is this just the this is this would just be the design uh, and and um... but if we get if we get into something you know, we've got a bunch of boxes and styrofoam laying around they're the ones we turn to as to how this goes together. Yes, we could definitely retain their services to do the <coughs> actual build out um, if we wanted to, or uh, depending on, on price point, uh, potentially do it in house. Um, but that adds some uh, timing to the, the project. I think that's where, in our discussion, too, we felt 
that we don't have time uh, to have staff do it. We really need to get back up and running as soon as possible. So it probably would be a good idea to have professionals come in who could do it in a few hours and be back on the road. Whereas you could run into problems. I was just going to say, what we can't, I mean, an important component of this is, is that what the redesign is going to have to include the electrical needs and rewiring electrical potentially and, you know, any of the conduit needs, uh, the, you know, HVAC. These are things that we, we can't, we can't design or plan. Um, and so, uh, that's part of what this is going to include. Now, once this design plan is done, then we have we have other we, we have options potentially as to who's going to perform that work to, to execute it. Uh, that's another. That's the next step. And then once you've made that decision, then then it's implement, implementation time. Uh, we, there's one scenario where there's an outfit in I think Ohio where we we take our truck out there and they would do all the implementation of uh, or as much as we wanted at that point maybe we do they put put in they do the hvac and reconfiguration of kind of the basic infrastructure and then we get the truck back here and we then we just bolt in the equipment and we do the install on the, on the video stuff itself but uh this is the becomes the plan the game plan for that depending upon who does the subsequent steps subsequent steps. We've got the system on it. They're going to come on here and take a look at what's in the truck, understand the state of current productions and growth and future programming. Makes sense. They'll be here for about three days to work with you guys. Jeffrey, is there anything in that truck right now in terms of equipment that you feel and your technical expertise that would be kept after this system audit? No, I'm uh, talking about the technical equipment. I don't want to hear about HVAC or electrical correct. system or any of that. There's a uh, very little. Okay. Um, we do our replay system uh, will be kept. Um, there will we will send it to the manufacturer to have uh, some upgrades put into it okay. to make it compatible. Um, there's uh, a few, audio. Audio. Uh, audio will be all new as well. That will be all new. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a few other uh, pieces in there. Uh, a recorder. Um, there's like a waveform monitor. There's a few okay. little ancillary things, but the majority of it. It will not be compatible with okay. the new. So I wasn't in the in the initial meeting, and I was not in the, the committee that did this. But I, I guess I would have started asking you that stuff right then and there, mm -hmm. and knowing that there are only two or three things inside that truck that our head of our technical head wants to keep. So I look at a system audit and go, Are you really doing a system audit, or are you just going to go with a hammer and take out ninety eight percent of it because you're not keeping any of it? Right, and I've, I've, I I uh, I have talked to the engineer that would uh, probably work with us. Okay. Part of that audit is. What do we? What would we, would we like to see in the truck? Um, not just what's in there currently, but also what are the pieces? What are the equipment? Um, we've got a, a laundry list of uh, cameras, switcher, uh, routers, all that kind of stuff. Of this is what we'd like to see. Is it all going to play nice with each other? Yeah, and they're and they're going to run through that scenario with you, and make sure that it all does play nice together and keeps us moving forward ten to fifteen years into the future. Moving on to the equipment and design overview portion here, and then the documentation. As well as that final consulting review, where they will they'll present us uh, present us with the final documents with the relative conclusions and, and, and everything. You know, when I look at this, the first thing that I do to try to find efficiencies when I look at something like this is I go, who's actually going to build out the truck? I mean, the physical building out of rewiring it. You find some corrosion in your wiring, or perhaps your 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 generator is junk. You need a new generator. You're going to rewire from the generator forward. Your HVAC system's old and it's full of whatever. You're going to redo all that. Do these build-out centers not have their own design and, and to handle all this in-house? Or does Alpha actually, could we hand this entire project to Alpha and have them incorporate this design phase is really what I look at it as, the design phase, and then have them actually do the disassembly, the reassembly, working in conjunction with you. Can Alpha do all of that? Yes. They can do all of yes. that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's part of this is this is the first step. Um, yeah, no, I, I I understand that, but right. So. And part of part of the proposal that they'll hand us with you know tech drawings and everything is okay. if we were to do the build out, this is what it would cost on top of this. Okay. Price. Okay. So they're going to give us that additional information, great. And they're in Eden Prairie, right? Correct. They would be able to do it all in Eden Prairie. Okay. 
I just wanted more background on it. Thanks, Jeffrey. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. Additional questions or comments? Well, Jenny. Do all of these steps or any of these steps have to go up for an RFP? I don't know what. Well, I think this design plan sort of becomes the RFP. Um, okay. And you know, it may well be that Alpha supplies us with a subsequent proposal to, for that implementation, like Jeff was saying, and then Zebra Prairie. But it doesn't preclude, you know, if the Ohio outfit was came in with a price that you really liked, then uh, there's that possibility as well. But so this this sort of this the, the work product that comes out of this first step becomes the in essence an RFP. We would submit that to others. Yeah, to this Ohio would be the design spec. Yeah, it would be okay. the, the design spec. Questions or comments? If we've covered everything, then I would look for a motion to approve the production truck design proposal as presented. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. And next up, don't go. Too far. Yep, yeah. no. <laughs> I was trying to move on real quickly so you wouldn't <laughs> leave. Uh, next up, we have EFP field camera replacements proposal. Tim, are you starting us off here? Okay. Yes, Madam Chair, what in front of you is a proposal for a replacement of three portable field cameras uh, that would uh, uh, replace the old Sony F330s uh, that have been used by the staff uh, that date back to 2007. These aren't, this has nothing to do with the truck. These are our individual portable cameras. Uh, and they've served us well, but they are at the end of their, their road. And um, and so I, I can let Jeffrey just talk a little bit about it. I, I, my own personal thought about this was that I really liked this proposal because instead of getting three cameras that are identical, which is what we have to had, right? They, uh, the, the staff has decided that they're going to get one ENG style camera, one cinema style camera, and one uh, DSLR style camera to accommodate different types of production. So this is, a, 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 I think, a novel approach that where we can take basically the same, dedicate the same level resources, but you get three different types of things that that can uh, can do different functions and cover a lot of the same kind of functionality. Too. So, Jeffrey, do you uh, want to add to that at all? Uh, yeah, uh, just to get some background. Uh, the cameras are aging. Uh, for the past couple years, we've looked at, okay, when do we want to, uh, to, to replace these? Um, what kind of pushed us now is all of the audio systems for it are part of the 600 megahertz band, so they would need replaced. It didn't make sense to spend a lot of money on audio systems for cameras that are going to be replaced in the near future, so it kind of made sense to kind of do it all together. Um, uh, like Tim mentioned, um, worked with the shooters and they kind of laid out a, a, a wish list of this is the types of things we do, this is what we'd like to see on cameras. Uh, they're all uh, smaller, more lightweight, um, uh, higher quality than what we have now, um, and it kind of uh, fits with the shooting styles of a lot of stuff these days. Um, or we can be a lot more low profile if need be. Um, or ramp it up to full production. Um, this will fulfill our needs for the foreseeable future, barring any big change in, uh, in, in uh, production. So. These also are much more compatible with um, our newly upgraded uh, edit systems so that we can load programming from the cameras onto edit stations and begin editing. You, these old, the old cameras they have right now, they have to go through sort of a, 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 an intermediary process of uh, transferring and then transferring back again into the edit systems. And so this will solve, be a time saver too in solving that issue. I think one of the other things that you pointed out to us that these cameras are not, you can't, you can exchange them, you can move them around. So they're not just a sole use like the one camera. You can't use it for anything else but for one kind of shot. They can be used for other things. Um, uh, you know, I know what we do here, but in terms of your actual equipment, just a couple of questions on it. So you've got Cam A, Cam B, Cam C, and then GoPro. 
Do you have a GoPro on stock right now? We do. Uh, okay. It's a Hero 3. It's, it's, it's old and it's, it's seen a lot of use. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're going for the 7 on that one. That right. makes sense. Um, the, the Cam A, B, and C. Let me make sure I understand and maybe some of the audience understand a little bit. Cam A, the call it for lack of a better term, the, the uh, upper level and can be the two upper level cameras here, the two more expensive cameras. Are these not, for lack of a better term, the football cameras? Are you not going to walk up and down the, the, the sidelines in, in football games and that type of event and film and then actually either stream that back to the truck? They're not connected to the truck via cable. No, these these are, are part of the truck at, at all. Okay. They are for all the package shows okay. um, whenever we go out and cover a business or, or those types of so it's completely separate productions from anything we would do with the truck. Good. Okay. So um, uh, the truck cameras then, I mean, I'm sorry, I might be getting off track a little bit here, Jeffrey. Tell me if I am. But the truck cameras, are, are they part of the upgrade with the truck? I know I'm going backwards here. Yes. Talk to me about that a little bit. So yes. you're going to upgrade that system as well. So uh, part of the truck would be all of the equipment, including cameras, audio, microphones, production switcher. That's all part of the, the, the truck proposal. So that's they're going to design from the ground up everything self-contained. Okay, fantastic. So you, these are your walking around cameras, huh? Correct. Good enough. Thanks. Yeah. So I just to inform the commission members, would this come out of the general equipment reserve then? Okay. The 40000 So we'd be taking it out of the reserve. The equipment capital reserve. Yeah. And our existing cameras are 2007? Yeah. That was interesting. Yes, <laughs> they they served us well, yeah, very they're, well. They're, but we've gone a couple of years, probably over the, what would be the reasonable <laughs> limit on those. All right. Additional questions or comments? Hearing none, I would look for a motion to approve the EFP field camera replacements proposal as presented. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. All right, then under other business, we have possible special meeting August 8th. Tim. Yes, Madam Chair, um, as you will recall from last meeting, we authorized the development of an RFP for possible use in the franchise renewal. Process and uh, speaking with um, Joe Manning and Best Best and Krieger, who's doing the drafting of that RFP, it's expected to be done probably mid July, in other words, a week or two. Uh, and we're hoping to have a what well, we've actually had at the end of the month, we have a committee meeting scheduled for legal and policy potentially to go over that. And if, if um, it, it's conceivable that an August meeting would be useful for the commission to examine that, if it's right at that point, and, and if you want to move forward, then, um, you know, you'd be in a position to do that. Um, it works with the timing of our renewal schedule as well. Uh, and so the thought was to sort of uh, authorize, I guess, Lori to uh, set a meeting for August 8th, which would be the normal second Tuesday, second Thursday of the, of the month. Um, have a, a special meeting for that date and, uh, and also authorize Lori to um, set a public hearing if that's needed. I'm not sure whether that's legally needed at the moment, but it's conceivable you might need a, a public hearing to occur at that, at that, uh, for that meeting. So uh, that's the recommendation is to, I guess, to give Lori the, the uh, authority to, to set that. Does she, need, does she need it, or can she just call it by herself? Well, I mean, uh, uh, the public hearing part, I think it would be worth to have uh, the commission authorize mm -hmm. that um, as a potential. I would move to authorize the chair to call the special meeting as requested. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Um, Ginny. Yes, just we need to reconsider the sequence of our regular agenda for a special meeting. So in other words, yes. you not only need to call a meeting, but you'd have to establish the agenda. Thank you. Yeah, agreed. All right, additional.
additional discussion. Does that need to be some sort of a friendly amendment? I don't think so. Does I don't it? think no. so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we do have a motion and a second uh, to make that motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Move to adjourn. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, it's pretty warm in here at this point. Yes, so it is. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you and good night.